so they're like you gotta hang, hang your arms out of it to try to help us tip it back. I was like, what? <laughs> We had three kids that went to my high school. Their dad was a uh, prominent figure in the, in the state or in the country there. They got dropped off every morning in a white Rolls Royce Phantom with a the driver. They start showing up in three white Rolls Royce Phantoms back to back. His dad got tired of them fighting who's gonna ride shotgun in the Phantom every morning. There was a lot of Cayenne Turbo S's because the turbo wasn't good enough. And then there was a lot of gimbalas, which is German tuner that did some crazy stuff with the Porsches and of course slapped like an astronomical price tag on everything. The other part, which is the sleeper part over there, they use the sleeper, was Nissan Patrol SUVs. Right now it's marketed as Armada, but the previous Patrol, it was sold in a lot of places in Europe, Australia. There were few SUVs that you can still buy in a stick shift. Now, you could bet your money that half the Land Cruisers, two other Land Cruisers and Nissan Patrols in the UAE are modified beyond 800 plus horsepower, upwards of 1500. One of the engines that comes is the same one shared in the GTR. Same basic 3.8 liter, just take the turbos off, bolt on turbos. If you try to look it up online, you'll see a lot of them, uh, they like to do in the four wheel SUVs to drive them sideways on like a wheelie, like a side wheelie. I remember being the first time in the car when, I, when one of my friends actually did that. I've seen it plenty of times. I didn't know part of it is you do, whoever's sitting on the passenger side has to hang some weight out of the window when you're up in the air. So they're like, you gotta hang, hang your arms out of it to try to help us tip it back. I was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean put my arms up? Like, it, what if we flip the other way? What's gonna happen to my arms? Put your arms up, put your arms up. And you know, under peer pressure, so I just, kind of tilted some weight, and sure enough, it just... And they'll do, they have a habit of doing it on roundabouts. So you're coming up and you see a little roundabout, and like, boop. Just the car itself wasn't, wasn't an issue. It's just like, anything else disposable. What, 30, 40 grand, just flip it over, get another one. What are you scared of? And sometimes you think they'll, they're bluffing. Because I've driven a lot of my friends' cars, raced them, uh, we'll do donuts, I didn't have, a car till I was a senior in high school. But some people had it before. And you see Lamborghinis, you'll see McLarens, you'll see Ferraris, the way they drive them there, you would not want to buy one. We had this little thing in high school that if your brother had a nice car, a fast car, if your dad had a nice car, whoever in your house or whoever that you know that had a nice car that you can get your hands on the keys after midnight, we used to go take, out, take him out and race him. Some of the highways there are about eight lanes going each way, straight shot for a few miles. So you can pick up a lot of speed. And the other little thing that we used to do is if you didn't have anybody in the car with you to vouch for you, you had to take a video on your phone. The highest that I've personally done was 273. And that was an 911S. My first car that I bought was a 2006 Chevrolet Lumina SS Coupe, which in the US, it is the Pontiac GTO. Just like any car enthusiast, I wanted the biggest, baddest car that you can buy, but then a reality hits you and you know, you're, there's a certain budget that you're dealing with. Although I had my parents' help. We went to a showroom, it was a Chevrolet showroom. I think my dad went to look at a Caprice, which is marketed in Dubai and the UAE. Uh, it's the same as an Impala here, but it was still marketed as a Caprice at the time. Big safe sedan, and I was looking at the Louis SS, so I got in the car. And the salesperson was kind of standing next to the window and he's like, oh, this car, blah, blah, blah. Oh, what I heard was mumble. I'm looking at the speedometer and it says 200 miles an hour. That sold me. So I just looked up and I was like, this is it. And it was a black GTO Lumina SS. And here's the thing about Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Over here, yes, I have a LP um, 750 SV Roadster. I have the baddest Avendator there is in the market. But that's not enough over there. Were you the first in line? Were you the second in the city to have it? Or were you the third? It wasn't about what you can buy. It's about how soon can you acquire it? Like the Bugatti Chiron. It was in the street there before any deliveries were in the US or Europe. There was one in Saudi, run around Saudi Arabia. 
you can get one of those manufacturers, maybe not Ferrari, Ferrari has their own little thing going on, but you can have some privileges that most don't. When I flew back from the US in 2013, I went back to Dubai for a visit. My family was still living there. My best friend throughout high school, he had at the time an SLS AMG with the gullwing doors. He picked me up from the airport and he's like, we're going out tonight. And here's the thing about clubs in Dubai. You, in Atlanta, if, you, if you're going in an SLS AMG with the gullwing doors or a Murcielago or a, a Vendator, shoot, even a nice S-Class can get some attention at a club in Atlanta. But when, when you pull in Dubai with a SLS and you look in front of the club and you see a Bugatti, then a Bugatti, then a gold Bugatti, then a 918, a G63, 6x6, and you get lost. I open the door, come to get out and make an eye contact with a bunch of the girls and people standing in the line, and I hit my head as I'm getting out of the car. So I went from the kid that is getting out of the SLS that cool $250,000 car to the idiot that was probably the first time that got an SLS. <laughs> the coolest thing though, the people there, the UAE nationals, they're very humble. They'll tell you money comes and goes. It, it doesn't, this Mercedes is not gonna make me a better person. They actually love to share it with the people they care for. And there's something over there, which is a ritual. If you really compliment something they have, they will give it to you. Now there's an extent and there's a limit, but don't be surprised if you get a hundred thousand dollar gift just by complimenting somebody about something they have. It happened to one of my uncles who went as a real estate developer. One of the majority stake owners in the company that he works for is a prominent figure in the UAE. He's, at the time he was about 32, 33 years old. But he had a huge car collection and his car collection was known in the UAE. I remember my uncle showing up at our house with a brand new 911 Turbo S. He complimented his business partner about the car and he's like, it's yours. As some of them have beliefs and envy and all kinds of stuff, but when you have that many cars, yeah, you can say I can buy another 911 Turbo S to please my business partner, but the way they do it, it just feels like it's coming out of the heart.